Now in this video, we're gonna be talking about some of the most powerful sales questions you can ask to close a deal without sounding salesy. And by the way, if you wanna learn more about sales and take your sales game to the next level, whether you're a salesperson, entrepreneur, a coach, or consultant, make sure to check out my free training at saleslegacy.com. Link is also in the description. Now, if you're ready for this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, the first question that we have for you is, do you mind if we go ahead and get started? Now, this one's actually a very powerful sales question because a lot of times salespeople don't really know how to begin a meeting, right? Sometimes they get nervous. They try to make small talk. They try to build rapport. They try to do all these things just to get the other person to like them. And the problem when you try to get people to like you, it's like you don't really act natural. You don't really get to the point. And sometimes you feel like, or the prospect might feel like you're wasting someone's time, right? So what you want to do instead, you want to just ask them, do you mind if we go ahead and get started? So for example, let's say you meet someone one. You say, hey, how's it going, John? I'm Patrick. Good to meet you. Great to meet you too. Da, 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 right? So you say some one or two things, a couple sentences. And then from there, what's going to happen is you're like, all right, well, we got to know each other for like the last like, 30 seconds. It's time to get down to business, right? So all you really have to do is just ask them, do you mind if we go ahead and get started? That's it. And it's not going to be rude. It's not going to be forceful. It doesn't sound very aggressive. It's just making sure you're not wasting your time. You're not wasting their time and people will actually respect it. So that's actually one of the most powerful questions because when you do that, people feel more confident in you. They feel like you know what you're doing. And then it's just going to make the entire sales process much easier compared to if you were just like doing small talk for 20 minutes. The last thing you want to do is like, you know, talk about like nothing for 20 minutes and then they're going to be like, okay, so like, what are you selling? Right? That's like the worst situation to be in. You want to make sure you control the entire dynamic, especially in the beginning when you set the expectations for the actual meeting and just like control the conversation just ask to get started now the next powerful question that i have for you is what got you interested in our call today now this is one that i personally have used a lot during my time you know doing tech sales and a lot of times why i do that is because sometimes i don't know where someone's coming from right i have a guest maybe i cold email them and then they came on the call and i have an idea that they want to buy my product and service right or they're looking to learn but i like to hear from their mouths because when they say it it just makes the entire selling process easier right so when somebody tells you like hey i want to learn more about you it feels a lot less like you selling them and it feels a lot more like you actually helping them and just educating them on how you might be able to solve their problems and why they might be able to buy your product and service. The other powerful reason subconsciously of why it's important is because when you, you know, right off the bat start pitching your product and service, they're going to feel like, wow, why is Patrick like pitching me so hard, right? Why is he trying to sell me something? And it feels like, ooh, sleazy, slimy. But if you ask them, what got you interested in this call? They're going to be like, oh, well, you know, you cold email me. I saw your website. It looked really good. So I was just curious to know, like, you know, and that's pretty much how the conversation goes. Right. So instead of you selling and sounding sleazy, you're really just having a nice conversation. And the most important part in this sales process is like the best salespeople know how to ask the right questions at the right time. That's all you got to do, right? Ask the right questions at the right time. Don't be salesy. Don't push before you sell anything. Ask the right questions to get someone intrigued and to get them to say from their mouths. And they want to say, I want to learn more about you. Right. So now they're approaching you asking for help instead of you, you know, forcing something on them. Now, the third powerful question we have is where are you at right now and where do you want to go? Right. And there's many different variations of how you can do that, but that's just conceptually what it is, right? So the first part of that question is where are you currently at right now? What is your problem? You know, what are you trying to do that you can't accomplish? What do you think is stopping you from achieving X, Y, Z? It's just crafting a situation or a story so that both sides can visualize where they are currently at in their lives, right? And a lot of times when you're selling something B2B, people have business goals. They're trying to generate more revenue, save more time, you know, something like that. And they might say like, hey, you know, we're stuck at, you know, half a million dollars in revenue. We want to really push to $2 million in revenue, but we don't know how to do X, Y, and Z. And if you know how to do that specific thing to get them to where they want to go, the sale is a lot easier, right? Because it's just, you're literally just helping them. And for example, for some services that I'm providing in the NFT space and, and Web3 and things like that, that's something I ask all the time. I'm like, okay, well, where are you at currently right now? They'll be like, oh, you know, we want to start an NFT project, but you know, we, we really understand Web2. We've been doing business for like 20 years, but we just don't know how to do X, Y, Z. We don't know how to market on Twitter. We don't, we don't understand how to do this and that. We don't know how to create a narrative, right? Whatever the case is. And when I sell my products and services, or really just part of sales or services in this situation, it's not like I have to like tell you like, oh, this is what I do. It's just like, oh, interesting. I might be able to help with that. Do you want to hear more about what I might be able to do? Right. So it's just understanding where they're currently at. And usually where they're currently at is a really big problem. And all you're doing is solving the problem. Now, the second step to the question is just asking, where do you want to go? So it's like, okay, you have a problem here. You know, let's say you want to start an NFT project. You don't know what to do, but you want to go on this side and you want to just launch a successful NFT project. Well, what does that look like? What does success look like? How much money do you want to make? How much are you willing to sacrifice? 
sacrifice in order to get to that position, right? So it's like where you're currently at, where you want to go. And then I'm just bridging the gap between that. And if I just show them like, hey, you know, I can actually help you get from here to here really easily. You just have to pay me money. They're going to be like, sure, why not? And that's pretty much how you want to ask that question, right? If you're able to move someone from point A to point B very easily, they don't have to put much effort. They don't have to put much time. They don't have to put much brain power. Then it is an easy sell and you can sell without sounding salesy. Now, the fourth question that I have for you is what's stopping you from reaching your goals on your own, right? So this is actually very, very important. So when you have point A and you have point B, someone wants to go from this side to that side, you know, obviously you have a service that can do that. The issue is that what if they can do it on their own, right? So like if I started my own project or whatever, and I can do it all by myself and someone's trying to charge me a lot of money, I'll be like, well, you're charging me so much money. I can just do it myself, right? Well, why do I need you? And that's always the situation you're going to be under when you're selling a product and service, right? What you want to do in this situation is you want to ask them like, okay, well, you can do it by yourself but like what's stopping you if you could have done it by yourself you wouldn't be on this call with me today right and they're gonna be like yeah you know we tried to do it but and then they're gonna give you these blockers of they're trying to achieve their goal they can't do it because they don't have expertise they don't have the software they don't have this they don't have that the right employees whatever the case is they don't have it that's why they're talking to you right even though you know the answer already you want them to verbally admit that because when they admit it they have that realization and they realize so much more of i really need to pay for patrick services right because i don't want to do this on my own it's going to take too much time. It's going to cost too much money. And even if I invest in those things, I don't even know if I'm going to do it well. But if I could just pay Patrick, he's just going to take care of the whole thing, right? And so that's the game you want to play. Remove the obstacles that people have and people will pay you a lot of money for it, assuming you understand where they're currently at and where they want to go. Now, the fifth question that I have for you is going to be, what were you hoping I could do to help? So now that we understand where the prospect is, where they want to go, what's stopping them from getting from point A to point B, and why they can't do it by themselves and why they need your service in particular, what you do is instead of directly selling them and telling them like, you know, they're jumping on that. Oh, I could do this. I could do that. What you do instead, you say, just take it easy, take it calm and just be like, all right, well, I kind of understand your situation. Thank you for sharing all that with me. Now I'm curious to know, you know, what were you hoping I can do to help? Very easy question, right? And in this situation, it makes them think. I mean, that's the whole point, right? Because if you just feed someone and you just like tell them, I can do this, this, and this, this is why you should buy it from me. They'll be like, yeah, I get it. But they just won't really get it because they don't have to use their brain. They just kind of like consume and they don't really think. But if you get them to think about it and, you know, kind of logically understand why they need to buy your services instead of you telling them why, the sales is going to be so much more effective because they are selling your services to themselves, right? So if I say, what were you hoping I can do to help? They will say, well, Patrick, I was really hoping that you can do this, this, and this for me. Can you do it for me? I would be like, hmm, interesting. Well, I might be able to help you with that. Let's talk about it more, right? And so it's a really powerful thing, right? Because it reverses the situation where you're not really selling the person, you're having a conversation and you're helping them and you're not telling them what you do, they are coming up with the solution that they need in that moment based on the pain that they have. And they're asking you, Patrick, please help me. I can't do this by myself. And if you are in that situation, it's like, dude, you don't even have to try to sell. You don't even need a presentation. You can do it all over in like one call because the pain is so strong. What you can accomplish, they feel confident in your offer. They feel confident in you. And then they feel like you have the perfect solution for all their problems, right? And then that's going to differentiate you from everybody else because you're not seen as a commodity. You're seen as a special, unique, value proposition specifically for their situation. Now, is that necessarily the truth in terms of like, can another person offer the same services as you? Absolutely, right? It's easy to just like copy someone's services, but emotionally, how people feel in that moment, they're gonna be like, yeah, you know, I know there are other agencies out there, but Patrick really understands me. Patrick really listens to me and he knows exactly what I want. So I'm going to go with him, not all these other guys, because they're just trying to sell me. I don't even know if they're going to do a good job, but I trust Patrick. So even if you're selling commodity services that anyone can copy, these are the techniques that you use to get someone to emotionally invest in you as a human being. And that's how you differentiate yourself from the rest of the competition. What you do to make yourself different is you offer a level of confidence, a level of trust, that level of rapport, right? These things are things you can't buy. You have to make someone feel these things. So if you're able to do that, it's just going to be so much easier for you to sell. And then from there, once they buy into you, you emotionally as a human being, they're going to backwards rationalize and be logical and be like, well, you know, I can go with this other guy, but I trust Patrick a lot more. Even if he costs more, he's a lot more likely to get the job done. But if I go for the cheaper route, it might be a big headache in the end, right? So I'm going to go with Patrick, even if it's more and I like him. So that's pretty much the psychology of what people go through in their minds. Maybe they don't think about it consciously. They just kind of run it through their heads and they just like make a decision. But those are the strategies that really helped me out when it comes to 
to B2B sales. I hope that you can use those strategies for yourself and close more deals. Okay, so we covered five different questions, very powerful questions that you can use to close more deals. And the thing is, when you look at these questions, you might be thinking, well, these sound so easy, Patrick, like anybody can do it. That's right, anybody can do it. But the difference between someone who's successful at it and someone who's not successful is really how you approach the situation when it comes to your tonality, your body language, and your ability to build rapport, right? So if someone's very like hostile, icy, like they're not very friendly, if they ask these questions, the other person's not gonna feel comfortable to talk. So if I said like, where are you at, where you wanna go? But I said in a very mean, cold way, like a stuck up salesperson, the person's gonna be like, uh, well, we're doing pretty good over here and I guess we just wanna generate revenue, I don't know, right? So it's like, you're not really getting much information. The whole point of all of these questions is to control the narrative and the conversation, ask the right questions to make the prospect feel comfortable. So when I go into these sales meetings, the most important thing I do in the beginning, and actually throughout the entire conversation, and before I even think about what questions to ask, is I gauge whether or not the prospect is comfortable with me, right? The more comfortable they are, even if I mess up, even if I ask the wrong question or I don't get all the information, if I have that relationship, I can just like correct, right? Because this person likes me as a person. So that's the whole thing. Get the other person to like you first, and then everything else becomes easier. But if you focus too much on line by line questions, like, how are you hoping I can help? They're not gonna answer unless they like you first, right? And so despite all these questions being very powerful, understand that the more most important thing in the beginning to make these questions work is to build that rapport, that trust, and that happens the moment you shake someone's hand and you look in their eye and you tell them your name, right? And so that said, that's everything we got to cover for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and let me know in the comments which question you found most valuable, and I will see you guys in the next one.